you grew up in an abusive household or you have a history of being in an abusive relationships, you may have problems with expressing anger. Hi, my name is Dr. Natalie Jones. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. People, especially women, um, women that I work with are especially prone to this, um, have challenges with expressing anger if they've had um, abusive relationships or um, relationships that have been neglectful, either physically or emotionally neglectful. And they typically have problems with expressing anger because they typically learned at some point, um, you know, in their relationships, either with their parents or with their lovers or, or what have you, that expressing anger for them wasn't safe, um, meaning that they learned that that person didn't want to hear their anger, that person was not going to validate their anger, or three, that person uh, may become overreactive and explosive towards their anger, and so they may have had to suffer consequences um, uh, just for being angry. Uh, so, you know, if they become angry, for example, their partner or whomever may blow up and become physically reactive or hyper aggressive. Um, and so, you know, they learned or they, they started to believe based on the reactions of others that anger is actually not a beneficial emotion or it's very destructive. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. Anger serves as a very important emotion and data point for you. Um, so for most of us, anger is not a primary emotion. It's usually a secondary emotion. However, it can be. Uh, so what do I mean when I say that? Primary emotions are emotions that you usually feel first. Um, and this comes up also a lot with men. So for example, you may feel frustration, um, but, you know, instead of, you know, staying with the emotion of frustration, then anger comes and then you get, you know, hostile when you become frustrated. Uh, another emotion may be feeling scared or intimidated and then you get angry as a result of that. And so you have to figure out the 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 function that your anger serves, right? Um, whether it's more of a security blanket for you or if it's like a protective emotion for you. So if you've been, uh, if you've experienced any type of trauma or assault, a lot of people will become angry as a way, as a self-defense mechanism and it serves as a protector. Anger gets them more respect. Anger has people fearing them and they won't be, you know, treated inappropriately, so to speak. So those are some examples of the purpose that anger can serve for you. But um, it, you know, I challenge people to, you know, sit with their anger if they feel it now, if they've been conditioned to not feel, um, anger or that their emotions don't matter. One of the things that I do in my practice is I, I allow people the space to, you know, process their feelings and allow their feelings to bubble up to the surface and also, you know, be mindful about what, their emotions are teaching them in the moment, right? So what information is your anger giving you about one, yourself, right? About your body, right? Where are you feeling it in your body? Um, what information is it giving you about the situation and her persons that you're dealing with? And the third thing that I try to teach, work with people about is um, how anger can be constructive. So we've talked a little bit about how you can use it as a data and information point, but how can you be very constructive, right? Because you can become angry with someone and still be constructive about, you know, how you express it and still get your needs met and have a healthy exchange with someone. So it doesn't have to be you know, this thing where you have anger and it's unsafe or things come out all at one time, because that's also a very common phenomenon, too, where people sort of internalize and stuff down their emotions and stuff them down. And then when they do finally allow themselves to become angry, then things just become 
it explodes, right? Like you're, you're angry about stuff that you did, you know, that somebody did to you back in the 1990s. You're angry about some stuff that somebody said to you last week and another thing and another thing and another thing, right? And so, you know, try not to compartmentalize and address things as they come, right? And so I think there is a thing such as caring confrontation, right? And caring confrontations and things like that can only be done with people that are emotionally safe and that are ready to respect your emotions. So things like this cannot be done with people that aren't ready to listen to you, don't make space for you, um, and aren't emotionally safe just in general people to be around. So you can do a caring confrontation where you can say, I feel, and this is why I'm feeling this way. And this is what happened with you that caused me to feel this way. And I'd like to address it. And that's the most optimal situation. And, and, you know, every, every situation is different for everyone. So, um, I'm not here to, you know, say that this works for everybody in every situation because it doesn't. Um, but there's, there's certain, tips and tools that we can use um, to manage that. But I think that's one way if you want to do it with one person. But if you want to just kind of do it with yourself, practice doing mindfulness, like I mentioned before, you can also do with um, an emotional dumping exercise, um, a brain dump, which is where you kind of journal about your anger and your frustrations. You know, you just kind of dump it out on a piece of paper and you just sort of release it to yourself. Again, that's not an exercise that works for everyone because everyone is at different stages with their anger, but you know, we have to assess each person, but anger is, is not a bad thing and it does not have to be destructive and it can actually teach you a lot about yourself in your situation. But I think if, if anything, you, um, the most healthy thing to be able to do for anyone is to get to a place where you can express um, how a person makes you feel, where you can learn to vocalize that um, with people who make you feel that way. And if you are around someone that can't express anger, that you can't express your feelings or your anger with in a healthy way, you have to assess that situation and act accordingly. I hope that this makes sense. And that's all for now.